Okay, I thought I'd take a moment to compare two widely different computational techniques for antenna simulation in the antenna world. One is the almost legendary numerical electromagnetics code, NEC, that uses the method of moments techniques. And the other involves a time domain approach where you literally solve electromagnetics equations in time in all space. And that provides ample opportunity to view the problem set in a way that's just not possible with the NEC approach. But each has their advantages and disadvantages. And I thought we would compare the simulation of a five element 20 meter beam to help highlight those differences. The method of moments comes from the days of computer punch cards. And occasionally you will still hear someone say, you use the, for example, the ground definition card, as if you were preparing a punch card and inserting it into a stack of cards for submission to the computer room. Rather than simulating the entire volume, it breaks down the problem into individual pieces and computes the relationships in between those pieces. Because of this approach, it is quite a bit more efficient especially in the age of older computers where processing was very valuable. So as I said, it breaks the problem down. Here's our five element beam with the elements broken down into 21 segments each. And each segment is in related to each other through mathematics. Consider each piece like its own individual antenna that has a relationship with every other piece in our model. So now we're going to actually compute a five element simulation using Fornec2, which is uses the NEC method of moments. We have our beam set up here as wires, XYZ coordinates of wires, and we're ready to go. It's already been dimensioned per a particular design. We fire up the 14.2 megahertz and start. It runs in the background, computes really quick, and behold, already done. We have a pattern. We have currents that we can witness. We can look at the phases of the currents with the press of a button. Analyze the gain, the pattern, the front to back very, very quickly. This is the method of moments great benefit. It gives you answers in a jiffy quick way. One of the immediate benefits of this high speed turnaround is your ability to do a what if analysis by changing parameters to get you towards your goal quicker. Now we're going to look at the finite difference time domain method, which breaks down the entire volume into what's called a Yi cell. Think of it as a Rubik's cube of uh, little cubes, and it computes the electromagnetic relationship between each cube, whether it has a conductor in it or not. And it solves the math in time. So it starts from an initial impulse and propagates it until it gets to a stable state. Now I have to say that I am not actually going to perform the simulation here because that takes far too long sometimes hours sometimes a week depending on the problem because again we're computing the entire volume not just the actual antenna elements and their relationships it's a far different way of doing this and plus because we're starting with an impulse and moving it through time it takes time for the entire system however you have it arranged to stabilize and we call that converging. So let's see what the result was from a particular computation on the five element beam. We're actually going to witness the time domain movie from when the impulse starts until the Hyagi Uda stabilizes into a machine for hurling energy in a particular direction. We start with the impulse on the driven element, and that's very obviously seen here. These are the magnetic fields surrounding the elements. You can also look at the electric fields with FTTD, but uh, we're going to look at magnetic because it most closely uh, parallels the current flow in the conductors. Phase is not apparent other than the fact that we're viewing through time. And you can see each element picks up energy and then re-radiates it. And that's the secret of a Yagi Uda. Any conductor in an electromagnetic field will pick up energy and the length of the conductor determines at what phase it retransmits the energy. 
So as you can see, it takes quite a while for the Yagi Uda to get itself set up. It's not instantaneous. In the NEC uh, method of moments technique, all this is solved at the end state. Here we actually have to go through the machinations of time to get to the end state. Now, that's a key difference. That's why the computational time to simulate these problems is vastly different. And then we can see finally a little bit of energy going from left to right as we watch the phases move from right to left in the elements. Still not there yet though. During simulation we would see this converge slowly. Uh, there's basically a value that it has to reach a, a stability factor of 30 dB, no difference. It's something we have to uh, keep an eye on because sometimes these models don't converge and that's a big problem. Okay, I think we're finally there now. The five element beam is now a machine that is pumping energy towards the right just like we want it to, with the longer reflector on the left, the driver, and the three director elements. So we have method of moments and finite difference time domain, two vastly different techniques to achieve the same goal. We often run both where I work to make sure we have agreeable results. This is relevant today's world where we're always trying to get cell phones to have ever more numerous antennas built into them. 5G is only going to make it more interesting. The FDTT approach is more appropriate for this design because it can simulate dielectrics and human flesh, everything that's in the 3D space around the antennas. So there you have it. Two tools, method of moments, mostly used in NEC, and finite difference time domain. Viva la choice. This is KX4O. Thanks for listening.